Hello, and thank you for joining me for this particularly important talk. For the past few months now, the ordinary man and woman in the Western world has been bombarded with the claim from Western politicians, Western mainstream journalists, and Western so-called experts on the inevitability of a war between NATO and Russia. Whilst the claim of an inevitable war between NATO and Russia has not been supported by either a persuasive argument or concrete evidence, a number of ordinary people in the Western world have developed feelings of anxiety and fear stemming from the unsubstantiated claim. That some ordinary men and women in the Western world have been made to feel despondent over the fault of a global war is not only a crime against humanity, but it is also infuriating. Infuriating because the ordinary man and woman in the Western world is already imbued with anxiety and fear pertaining to the appalling state of their economies, the devastation wrought on their cultures due to immigration, the exponential rise in crime, especially of the violent kind, the erosion of freedom of speech, the normalization of sexual depravity, the political indoctrination of children, the development of a police state, the effects of the so-called COVID vaccine, the normalization of Satanism, and the realization that they are stateless whereby the apparatus of the state is wielded against them as a weapon, unless they submit to state ideology. In light of what the ordinary man and woman in the Western world is being brutally subjected to by their politicians, journalists, and so-called experts, this talk aims to make a modest contribution in trying to allay their anxiety and fear over a so-called inevitable war between NATO and Russia. Let me begin by saying this. There will not be a war between NATO and Russia. Despite the impending doom as claimed by Western politicians, Western journalists and Western so-called experts, these people are either concealing or are oblivious to the reality that a conventional war between NATO and Russia would quickly lead to nuclear Armageddon, resulting in the complete destruction of the world. Furthermore, those politicians, journalists, and so-called experts know nothing about the high-level contacts between the American leadership and the Russian leadership, contacts which have ensured peace between America and Russia since 1949. Now, before I move on, I say American leadership rather than NATO leadership, because America is NATO and NATO is America. Ever since the Western military bloc was established in 1949, the Americans have comprised the bones, the organs, the blood, the arteries, the veins, the capillaries, the muscles, and the skin of NATO. NATO is an American body, with other NATO members such as France, Germany, and Britain providing auxiliary support to the American body. Thus, when we talk of NATO, we talk of America. No America, no NATO. Furthermore, I say that peace has ensued between America and Russia since 1949, because it was in this year that Russia detonated its first atomic bomb, meaning that America was no longer in sole possession of nuclear weapons, meaning that Washington and Moscow were compelled to develop and maintain high-level contacts, high contacts with each other so as to avoid nuclear Armageddon. Finally, when I say high-level contacts, I am referring to exceptionally senior 
an extremely competent political, diplomatic, military, and intelligence individuals in America and in Russia, most of whom you will never learn about and never see. Indeed, you will never even learn of their names. It is those individuals who are the elite of the elite in their respective fields, tasked with preventing war between America and Russia. Now, I said earlier that there will be no war between America and Russia. Why do I say that? Because of the existence of thousands upon thousands of nuclear warheads in America and in Russia. Enough warheads to destroy the world, and with it, the human race, many times over. Hypothetically speaking, if America and Russia were to engage in a conventional war with each other, soldiers, tanks, warplanes, and battleships, this would very quickly escalate into a nuclear exchange between the two superpowers, in which both would fire it, in which both would fire at each other from land, from air, and from sea, what is known as the nuclear triad, thousands of nuclear warheads carried by ICBMs. In short, there would be nothing left of both America and Russia, and nothing left of the rest of the world. Now, please note that this is something which Western politi politicians, Western journalists, and Western so-called experts make no mention of when they claim of an inevitable war between NATO and Russia. The existence of enormous nuclear arsenals in Russia and in America, the two countries account for approximately 90% of the world's total stockpiles of nuclear weapons, with the Russian nuclear arsenal being the largest in the world, has kept the peace between Moscow and Washington since 1949, has prevented a third world war, has prevented nuclear Armageddon. Under no circumstances would the American and the Russian leaderships intentionally go to war with each other when they know that to do so would be suicidal. Indeed, there is a doctrine which pertains to this and has its origins in the Cold War, namely mutual assured destruction, MAD. It, has, it is at this point that I would like to pose a question to Western politicians, Western journalists, and Western so-called experts who claim that war between NATO and Russia is inevitable. Why do they make no mention of the mutual assured destruction doctrine? If it is because they believe the doctrine no longer applies, then they need to explain why this is. It is my submission that knowledge of the mutual assured destruction doctrine makes the ordinary man and woman feel safe. Hence why Western politicians, journalists, and so-called experts do not mention it. That nuclear weapons kept the peace between Russia and America during the Cold War, have kept the peace between the two to this very day, and will forever keep the peace between both countries, is why I regard the existence of these weapons as a necessary evil. Because it is this evil which preserves peace between Moscow and Washington, and thereby prevents a third world war, sparing the lives of millions of people who otherwise would die in a conventional war between Russia and America. Evil maintains peace. Is there a greater paradox in existence? I think not. The necessary evil that is nuclear weapons can be exemplified by two examples. Firstly, if America and Russia had not developed atomic bombs, then there is no doubt that there would have been a third world war 
involving the Soviet Union and the United States after 1945, a war which would have most likely started in the hotspot that was Berlin and then rapidly expanded to other continents, causing unprecedented destruction in human life on a global scale. And secondly, the existence since 1998 of nuclear weapons in India and in Pakistan has ensured peace between these two bitter of enemies. Now, I am most certainly not saying that there have not been times when a nuclear war between America and Russia could have erupted, because there have been. The years of 1962 and 1983 are the closest that the world has come to nuclear Armageddon. In 1962, there was the Cuban Missile Crisis, which, thankfully, the governments of John Kennedy and Nikita Khrushchev were able to resolve peacefully. And, crucially, steps were taken following the end of the Cuban Missile Crisis by the Americans and the Russians to ensure that never again would a lack of effective communication between the two sides, two, two sides cause what it did, a near nuclear war Hence, amongst other things, a direct telephone line between the White House and the Kremlin was established. A telephone line which has been used ever since in good and in bad times in relations between Washington and Moscow. Then, 1983, a year in which everything that could have gone wrong in relations between America and Russia did from the deployment to Western Europe of American ballistic missiles, to Ronald Reagan's evil empire speech, to the Soviet shooting down of a South Korean airliner. The extremely tense year of 1983 culminated in a NATO maneuver at the end of the year called Abel Archer, which convinced the Kremlin that America was, prepare, was preparing to launch a preemptive nuclear strike against the Soviet Union. It was only after Abel Archer ended that the Americans realized how close the, wo the world had come to nuclear Armageddon. Indeed, Reagan was shocked to discover that the Kremlin truly believed that he would use nuclear weapons against Russia in a preemptive strike. Consequently, steps were taken at the behest of Reagan to improve the high level contacts between Washington and Moscow, so as to make sure that the two would never again be on the verge of a nuclear war with each other. The high level contacts between what I describe as the elite of the elite of the American and Russian leaderships is a fascinating subject to study. Amongst other things, these high level contacts which are utilized every day of the year, year on year, no matter what, demonstrate how the Russians and the Americans have the fate of the world and mankind in their hands. And irrespective of how dire relations may be between Moscow and Washington, these Russian and American individuals do not and will not fail in their objective of keeping the peace between their respective countries. Failure would, of course, result in the destruction of the human race. Their professionalism, competence, calmness, devotion, and ability to navigate through the most trying of political waters is unmatched in the world. These Russians and Americans know each other, respect each other, know how to reason with each other, and are united by a common goal, the preservation of world peace. Let us take the current state of American-Russian relations. The word appalling does not sufficiently describe the state of relations between, Was between Washington and Moscow. Yet, the elite of the elite are able to rise above that acrimonious environment and talk with each other every day, informing one another of, for instance, 
planned exercises and missile tests by each other's militaries and planned visits abroad by each other's presidents. When a critical matter affecting both countries emerges, such as a Russian missile allegedly entering the airspace of a NATO member, the elite of the elite will speak immediately with each other and resolve the issue. And sometimes the communique which they construct and which is then put out to the world by the White House and the Kremlin will not be truthful, but it will be a falsehood told in order to preserve world peace. Now, you may be thinking, but America is currently fighting a proxy war with Russia in Ukraine. Well, you are absolutely correct. But even when America and Russia fight a proxy war against one another, the Americans and the Russians attach rules to such a war. And it is one of the responsibilities of the elite of the elite to ensure that these rules are adhered to by both sides. The world of the elite of the elite is a world within a world. America and Russia can fight each other by proxy and simultaneously ensure that there is not a direct war between themselves. They did this in Vietnam and in Afghanistan and are doing so in Ukraine today. Yes, the high level contacts between the Americans and the Russians is by everyday standards, a very strange business. All of this brings me to the next point, the absolute imperative of the existence of relations between America and Russia. No matter how critical I am and always have been of US and Western foreign policy in general, never ever would I want to see relations between Washington and Moscow severed because without these relations, the chances of a war erupting between the two would rise considerably. Furthermore, never ever would I want to see relations between London and Moscow severed and for the same reasons. Despite the acrimonious state of relations at present between Britain and Russia, the high level contacts between both countries remain operational and effective. There is more to British Russian relations than what you see on television or read about in newspapers and in the name and in the interests of global peace, we should thank God for that. Whilst the chances of an intentional war erupting between America and Russia are negligible, there is the chance of an accidental war breaking out, especially because of how tense political relations are now between Washington and Moscow. A misunderstanding or, misinter or misinterpretation could occur and with catastrophic ramifications. But even then, the elite of the elite are skilled in how to prevent a misunderstanding or misinterpretation from occurring in the, first, in the first place. And should one occur, they will be quick to resolve it. We must be mindful that America and Russia are old hands at preserving peace between themselves, even when they are fighting a proxy war against each other. What I have said in this talk it's not something which you will hear from Western politicians or Western mainstream journalists or Western so-called experts. They have their own agenda. And anyhow, they are ignorant concerning the content of my talk and would not understand or care about one word which I have spoken. And no doubt, they would find what I have said to be boring. Well, what can I say about such people other than small things amuse small minds? But as I said at the beginning of this talk, the purpose of what I have said is to try and diffuse the anxiety and fear in some people's minds 
about a so-called inevitable war between NATO and Russia. So, again, please understand that the existence of thousands upon thousands of nuclear warheads in Russia and in America, and the high-level contacts between the Russian and American leaderships, have both ensured peace between the two through thick and thin since 1949. The doctrine of mutual assured destruction, MAD, will never lose its preponderant position in relations between Washington and Moscow. And what more evidence do you need to prove that the claim of an inevitable war between NATO and Russia is baseless than by how Western politicians, Western journalists, and Western so-called experts never mention the mutual assured destruction doctrine, because to do so would completely undermine their claim. So please take it upon yourselves to see if the aforementioned groups mention the mutual assured destruction doctrine. A simple internet or social media search will confirm that they do not. Finally, the elite of the elite in America and in Russia will talk with each other throughout the entire duration of the forthcoming NATO exercises in Eastern Europe. Each day, they will converse with each other so as to assure one another. Thank you, as always, for listening.